So this is video four, and we're going to be talking today about mean absolute deviation. I'm in your 4A packet, page 17. So the problem of the day, I've actually mentioned in class uh, a couple of times, about one time when I went to a local car, car dealership, and the car salesperson told me that the average savings of his customer, actually her customer, was $1,500. And I was like, wow, $1,500, that's a great deal. And then I went on to ask about what does she mean by average and come to find out she had sold two people cars who worked at the dealership and they saved $5,000. They had a Yukon Denali on sale because it was a year old sitting on the lot. It was a 2011 and this was already 2012 at the time. And that you could save $3,500 if you bought that car, but it was a $50,000 car, not something I'm going to be buying. And then nine customers of hers had saved around $500. So I made this problem up about it, and you can see that, yes, in the real world, average could be mean, median, or mode. The mode, well, nine customers out of the 12 that they gave me information on, because yes, I went digging in the dealership to find out how many customers had this person based this average on. Well, nine of her latest customers had saved $500. I'm not working for GM or their dealership, so I'm not gonna save $5,000. And I'm not gonna buy that Yukon Denali, so I'm not gonna save $3,500. So more than likely, the true representation of what I'm gonna save buying a car from this woman was about $500. But truly, when you figure out the mean, the mean was $1,500 because it's skewed by that sale of the two people who worked for the company, those two $5,000 and that one $3,500. So the mean really was $1,500, but it's not really what to expect. I'm going to save probably $500. So you have to be very careful when you hear people or advertisements say, oh, on average, our customers saved da 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 da, -da. So you gotta dig into that to really find out what does that mean? Because mean, median, and mode, those measures of central tendency can be taken very misleadingly. The next example here talks about a health club and people swimming. So I would like you to answer question one on your own, find the mean, median, and mode. And remember, there's not just four people swimming laps here. You have to total this column to see how many people are in this data here. So find the mean, median, and mode. Use your smarts when you're finding that median, because you're not going to want to put all of those numbers in order. You could use the table. And then question two says, which measure, meaning which measure, mean, median, or mode of central tendency, mean, median, or mode, is least descriptive? So what really doesn't represent this data? And which number most accurately, we don't want to use the misleading one, most accurately describes this data? So answer these three questions, pause the video now, We'll go over that in class tomorrow. So as I stated, this video is about mean absolute deviation. And this is 9.3 in the text where you can find some information about this. This is another measure of variance. How spread out is the data? So it's called a measure of variance. How wide the, or distributed is the data. So it's a completely worked out problem. I'm just going to talk through it. The table shows the scores of 10 people in a dartboard game. Find the mean absolute deviation. Mean, okay, so we know we're probably finding an average. Absolute, oh, absolute value, distance from a value. Deviation, how far off is it from the 
mean? So deviation, how different is it is another way to say that. So find the mean score first. So yep, you're gonna try the true mean, add those 10 scores up, divide by 10 and you find out that it's 53. So then you create this table and each of the data points, 54 came first, then 40 was in the list, then 69, then 49. So you make this table and you list out your data numbers then you see how the middle column here is all what is the mean so the real true average was 53 and then you want to know what is the absolute value of your data point from that mean so 54 is one away from 53 40 so some people and it says you can subtract here to get that but remember you're finding absolute value 40 minus 53 would be negative 13, but no, absolute value, that would just be 13. 69 minus 53 would give you a positive 16, but we just write 16. 49 minus 53 would give you negative 4, but we just write 4. So we're finding the absolute value distance from the mean. So you can see the tables completely filled in, comparing each of the data points to the mean and their distance away. So then what you do is you calculate the mean of those distances. So you're finding another mean. So add those distances all up, one plus three, and you can see they did that and they got 96 for the total of that column. And divide that by how many there are, which was 10, so the mean absolute deviation is 9 and 6 tenths. What does that say? That says on average mean, the data points are the average distance from the true mean of this data. The average data point is about 9 and 6 tenths away from the real average. That's kind of a big mean absolute deviation. That means you kind of have a little bit of a spread. And you can see that, yes, what is our lowest value here? Our lowest value was 35, and our highest value was 73? 73. So our data is, you know, a little spread up there. And that 9.6, 9 and 6 tenths, tells me that the average distance of each data point is about about 10 away from the average which was 53 so i have points that are about 10 below it 43 and points that are about ah, 10 above it 63 but yes we know that it's really 35 and 73 are their highest and lowest values so it's another way of looking at how spread out is your data how variable is it? It's a measure of variance. So we're going to use this page 18 to help us calculate mean absolute deviation and then we're going to do this on our graphing calculators. So that's it for today's video and I'll see you in class tomorrow.